Okay, so this is your second video on processes, depending on what order you've watched them in. Uh, this time, rather than focusing on coastal erosion, I'm focusing on river erosion. Uh, and it's very crucial that you remember what section of the paper you are in when you are asked to define erosion. Okay, so if it's in the river section, water on the land, it must be related to the river bed and banks. If it's in the coast section, it must be related to the river cliff. So, river erosion is defined as the wearing away of the riverbed, its base, and its banks, its sides, or the edge of the channel. The material that is broken off is then carried away by the river water itself, downstream. There are two categories of erosion, and within these categories there are four types of erosion. The categories are vertical and lateral erosion, and then within these two main categories there are four types, hydraulic action, abrasion, solution and attrition. Vertical erosion and it happens near the source and in the upper course of a river, and this is where the, um, the river energy is focused downwards on the riverbed. And this is due to the river starting in mountains as a steep gradient, so all the focus of the river's energy is on its bed and moving down. This is where we get V-shaped valleys in the upper course. As the river moves down into the middle and lower course of the river's long profile, more water joins the river channel from tributaries, so the channel discharge increases. This means that the river has more water, and as a result it starts to go side to side, and this is called lateral erosion. Within these two categories, vertical and lateral, all four types can happen. So in vertical erosion, the upper course, vertical erosion could be completed using hydraulic action abrasion solution. Again, in the middle and lower courses, lateral erosion could be happening through the process of hydraulic action abrasion or solution. Erosion types then. So hydraulic action is your first one, sometimes referred to as hydraulic power. And this is when the sheer weight and impact of the river water causes parts of the riverbed and banks to break off. Abrasion is when fragments of the rock that have been broken off of the river banks and, banks and bed are picked up by the flow of the river water and then they bash against the bed and banks, breaking even more pieces of sediment off of the channel. Next we have solution, also known as corrosion. The acids in the river water can dissolve certain rocks, e.g. limestone and chalk. So if the river is flowing across a bedrock, so the rock underneath the channel, um, is made of these two types of rocks, then the rock will be slowly dissolved with the wa river water over time. The last type of erosion is attrition. Uh, it does not attack the riverbed and banks itself, but instead the fragments of rock that have been broken up by the other methods knock against each other and their particles become smaller and more rounded over time. Moving onwards, we've got our material, it's been eroded, it's been picked up, then the next process is transportation. So this is the movement of sediment within the river water from its upper course to its lower course. There are four types of transportation, just like there are with coasts. They're the same, same terminology. Solution, suspension, sortation and traction. This diagram is summarising the four main transportation methods. The first one we'll talk about is suspension. So suspension is where light particles are able to float in the river and move downstream. So they're light enough to be carried in suspension or suspended flow. The next one to consider is solution. Very similar to the erosion process in that the material is dissolved and then it's carried in that dissolved form along the river channel. Okay, So be careful, solution is both an erosion and a transportation method. We then have large boulders and pebbles that are too heavy to be picked up and suspended and travelled um, in the water column itself so they are rolled along the riverbed usually happening in the upper course. Saltation is when small pebbles and stones are bounced along the riverbed so that leap hop in action okay, so they're going to leap along the riverbed so similar to coastal processes you've got floating, dissolved rolling and then bouncing. The final process to consider is that of deposition. So deposition is the dropping of sediment due to the river no longer having enough energy to carry the material anymore. And this happens when a river enters an area of shallow water, for example on the inside bend of a meander which forms a slip-off slope. The volume of water within the channel might go down, so it decreases. So after a flood, when all the water has gone on the side of the river channel, the water level um, 
spreads out, dissipates, and you have less energy. Or it could be during times of drought when the water within the channel is really low and there's just not enough um, water to give enough energy to pick up the material. It could be when there's a large uh, load of sediment within the river, so there's too much sediment for the river to move, so it's overloaded. It could be there's an obstruction, so when the river meets the sea or when the river enters a lake, these interrupt the flow of the water, slowing it down, and then less speed means less energy, so it drops the sediment. Uh, the last way is when it comes towards the end of its river's journey, so at the mouth when the river meets the seawater and the river energy is low. Okay, so that completes this presentation. It goes over processes of erosion, transportation and deposition. And like I said at the beginning, make sure that when you're in the river section, you use the term rivers and banks and bed. If you're defining process in the coastal section, you're referring to the cliff and the base of the cliff and undercutting. Okay.